Good morning. It's day two in our review of John 4 and the fascinating salvation story of the woman at the well. You can read Sunday's text again, John 4, 13 to 26. Or since we're talking about sin, read Romans 3, 9 through 24. You can do that now. When Jesus shifted the conversation to spiritual matters, he knew that eventually required a discussion about sin. He asks the woman about her husband and then reveals that he knows about her five ex-husbands and the man she's now with who isn't her husband. So the matter of sin is addressed. We're not told everything that Jesus said to her, but we know that whatever he said, she did not leave his presence feeling condemned or shamed. Instead, she left her heavy water container and went to tell the people in her community that Jesus knew about her sin. And yet, he did not despise and reject her as they had. She found mercy, forgiveness. Talking about sin. Really, no one likes to talk about it unless it's other people's sin, right? But Sin is what makes sense of the cross. So we share the gospel, and that means we have to talk about it. We talk about it with our children, helping them understand when they do wrong. There is a right and wrong, according to God and his word. So we learn to talk about our own sin, our sin nature, our wrong choices, our violations of God's law, our guilt, we can't come to God claiming that we're inherently good people because we're not. We can't come claiming to do a lot of good works when from God's point of view, all our good works are tainted by our sin nature and therefore not good in his sight. Isaiah wrote, we have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities are like the wind. They take us away. So our sin has to be addressed with God. His law reveals our sin. His spirit convicts us of our sin. And we respond with honesty and humility by confessing our sin. Remember, the word confess means to agree with. We aren't telling God something he doesn't know, he, he knows everything. In confession, we're agreeing with him about our sin, that we have done wrong, that we are wrong, that we need to be forgiven and cleansed by him. And he has provided a way for us to be clean. It is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So as we minister to people, eventually there needs to be a discussion about sin. If we don't, or someone doesn't want to at least address the issue, then the cross really doesn't make sense. Why would Jesus suffer such a horrible, painful death for us if we didn't need it? So how do we talk with people about sin? Well, as we said Sunday, we use the scriptures. My preference is Romans 3, 9 through 24. If someone will just read that passage and allow you to explain it, although it's pretty self-explanatory, then it leads to a healthy, holy discussion of our guilt, Christ's death to pay our penalty, and how faith in Christ will save us, cleanse us, and make us right in God's sight. I preached a message on that passage titled, Are People Good? No, but God is. I clearly taught the scriptures I encourage you when you have 30 minutes to listen to it. Uh, use it as a resource. It's on our church website. Uh, you can watch it, listen to it, even download it as a podcast. If that's too much, consider memorizing Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Those two verses make it very clear about the matter of sin. 
So to be effective in ministry, we have to become comfortable talking with people about sin. Today, look for an opportunity to minister to someone and see if you can bring up the topic and have a healthy, holy discussion about it. Talking about sin transitions over to the cross, and that's the best news ever. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for knowing all about our sin and choosing to forgive us and cleanse us by Christ's death and sacrifice on the cross. Equip us to help others be honest about their sin and find in you mercy and forgiveness. And now offer your prayers to the Lord.